Joining us live right now on 93.5, 1590 WAKR, my good friend, Dr. Joe Congeni, Akron Children's Hospital. And Joe, good morning. Injury seems to be all over the place, especially when we talk about college, high school, and into NFL sports, especially football. Yeah, we're about mid-season, Ray, and you and I have had to talk a lot, you know, um, one of the injuries, but we haven't spoken about it for a while this year, uh, that we're trying to get a handle on and reduce and maybe eventually eliminate our head injuries and concussions. And uh, I actually was a little bit pessimistic in 2013 when we started the targeting rule, Ray, but every year there seem to be tweaks in this rule, and it is there's slight nuanced differences between OHSAA high school and college and professional, but they've all made adjustments in the last few years, and I'm coming around to believing that it's really for the better. I think we're finally seeing some changes, and let me review a couple of points about why I think that might be the case. Like anything else, Ray, it's an incomplete. We don't know for sure until we do research at the end of the season. And you know that with some of the rules changes so far, the best one has been trying to eliminate the kickoff of all the changes we've made. We've made a lot of changes. But this targeting has changed, and maybe it's just a matter of the way we say it, what we call semantics. Is, is So one of the changes a couple of years ago was moving targeting from head-to-head hit of targeting to using the crown of the helmet, uh, lowering the head and using the crown of the helmet to any body part, head or neck, uh, of the of an athlete. Um, and so that crown of the helmet seemed to be something that people understood better than targeting, and I think that's helped a little bit. For so long, for 20 years, 30 years, people were – uh, learning that the hardest you could hit an opponent was to lower the head and use the crown of a helmet. But I see people moving away from that now, moving back to tackling with the shoulder, tackling properly. So number one, I think crown of the helmet, using that terminology has helped. Number two, I think the automatic disqualification. And I'm really, um, I think with somebody being removed from the game, it really has affected a lot of big games like Ohio State semifinal game last year, like the Clemson National Championship against LSU, that two of their best players were eliminated, disqualified, removed from the game, and you're removed from the first half of the next game. And so I think that has consequences that has players thinking twice. Number three is this, uh, and this is where you get into wording, forcible contact, uh, where, where you're using the body in a horizontal position um, to uh, <clears throat> the head or neck area is exactly how it reads. And um, for the purposes of attacking, uh, forcible contact that goes beyond making a legal tackle is the terminology they use. That horizontal position is something that they've come out with in the last few years. That may have helped as kids try to understand this. And remember, it's any position. So number four, offensive players or running backs that lower the crown of the helmet to hit a defensive player are also subject to the rules of disqualification and kicked out of the game. And in my world of watching high school, college, professional every week, I think there has been finally some people that are moving away. I think the rule is working some. I know that people that watch the game hate it. They want to get back to the big hits and all that, but we had to we had to make changes that really changed the mindset of football players. And I think targeting is coming around, and I'm fairly optimistic right now. Yeah, I agree with you. There's been uh, accountability with this, and to that degree, I do think it is taking some of that. So they're baby steps, right, Joe? But we're making steps in the right direction. Yes, I think you're right, Ray, and I think also, of course, at the high school level, we don't have this, and that's where I'm at every week, 
but at the college and professional, they can look at it because initially it is a bang-bang type situation. But you can get a sense that they use the crown of the helmet. Were they forcibly trying to, uh, you know, to, uh, to uh, make contact that goes beyond the legal tackle? Were they using that crown of the helmet on any part of the body? It's not just head-to-head. It's not just helmet-to-helmet anymore. It's any part of the body using the crown of the helmet. And, uh, and I think replay has helped, too, in college and professional. All right, Joe. Good stuff this morning. Thank you for the visit. Hey, I had one question for you, and, and this yeah. is up a couple of rungs on the ladder. We are seeing injuries all over the place with the NFL season. And a lot of people will complain that football's 12 months and OTAs and practice and everything into the spring leading into the NFL season. Joe, as a, as a doctor of sports medicine, do you think that had a role of COVID-19 and these players not practicing, getting their bodies ready? Because some will say, well, the wear and tear is too much. That's why you have injuries. But it seems like we've even had more injuries this year because they didn't have the tone-up period. I, I definitely agree with that. Yes, I think working out in a fitness facility, in a weight room, is a lot different from what goes on on the field. There just is a difference. And I think not having that period of time on the field and going almost immediately in August to significant contact on the field, the game is played differently than the way people working out in the fitness facility. And I would agree with you totally. And I think, although you said you went to the highest level, I think we've seen that in college and high school as well, Ray. I think you're right on it. That muscle memory just wasn't in place for these players at all the different levels, and we've seen the injuries, as Joe just said, on all the different levels. My friend, thank you for the visit. We'll catch up with you next week. Thanks, Ray. Enjoy this week. All right, thanks. Uh, all right, my friend. Enjoy it. Dr. Joe Congeni, Akron Children's Hospital.